Love All right, it. we're on Facebook Live. Welcome to it. We're about to do live and local. We got uh, Mike Allen, former news director, coming in this morning to tell us the story of the white lady. It's not just some white ass lady walking around. We got all ghost. we got plenty of those around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's a ghost, I guess. And uh, we'll hear about that story. But we got a lot to uh, unpack, as they say now, in live and local. Over rock and roll, I-95, I-95 rock, doctor. What are you doing over there? I'm tangled, for God's sakes. I'm tangled up in my wires over here. God, you're frenetic enough. I don't need that. Yeah, yeah, calm down. Uh, this portion of the show brought to you by Connecticut's own Candlewood Coffee. Support local. With every cup you drink, look for them at ShopRite, Big Y, Carol Lucy's, or online. CandlewoodCoffee.com. Don't forget about Operation Fine Tubs. We are uh, oh, searching Philip, for uh, Philip Michael Taylor Thomas. Philip, later. <laughs> Philip Michael Thomas, who played Tubs on Miami Vice. we got to get him in here on the show. And we're going to need your help. You guys are going to do the work, and then we're just going to receive tubs. That, too, shouldn't be a problem. That's right. Let's, uh, before we get to live and local, here's your I-95 right now traffic update. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jackie D is checking in. Jackie what, D works here. Who? Jackie D is hey, checking Jackie. in. Hey, Jackie. Jackie brings in muffins. Muffins, and she gets our coffee for us. Jackie's awesome. She's always smiling. I got a thing for her sister. Jackie's sister. Really? Yeah. I told... I've never met her sister. You never met her? No. Yamahama. <laughs> I told Jackie. I made the mistake of telling yeah. this to Jackie. And I think she told her sister, and then I met her, and it was weird. Yeah, awkward? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Ow! Lama's working on t-shirts. Everybody's working on t-shirts. Here we go. Woo! All right, there? buddy. A new report uh, uh, from Connecticut's uh, Conference of Municipalities and the nonprofit Dalio Education That's indicates some serious stuff there. Yeah, that one in five Connecticut households does not have a working computer. Yeah, Dalio education officials wow. say the report shows that 25% of state households lack internet service that is reliable, making remote learning difficult. <laughs> it makes remote learning impossible. It does. You don't have an internet Difficult would be the wrong word. I mean, I was going to start complaining about my internet connection during a Netflix show yesterday, and it would stop and it would you know try to recycle, but now I'm going to keep my mouth shut no. because that's nothing compared to that. No, that's what I would hope you, was hoping you'd do. Yeah. Because... No matter what, yeah, yeah. No matter what we do, right? You got 18 people on two devices at one time, yeah. and yeah. you know I'm buffering here. What year is it that I'm buffering? Right. I got the little circle going. I'm trying to watch The Office for the 50 billionth time. You don't need to watch it. Anymore. Well, I do. It no, relaxes you, you, me. You, okay. Well, good. Anything that relaxes you. Yeah. Time. I found out that you know there's not a lot on television that doesn't bring you down, right? I would, I would agree with that, yes. The news brings you down, of course. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the original programming that's being made now is either fictional crime or uh -huh. true crime. Right. All crimes. People yeah. being murdered you left and right. Are you going to watch happy shows, though? Yeah, I watch The Office. So I don't have to watch people be murdered. Okay. Because it's all Netflix has is murders and The Office. <laughs> and they're losing The Office in 2021. So... So what, you have any more, like, local... Of course. Stories? Okay, cool. Of course I do. I've got an ass load of them, in okay. fact. I, just, I need one more. Do you need a, an, an entire load of ass of local stories? No, no, I don't. The owner of an Ives Street restaurant facing uh, her third public health emergency order violation for flouting state coronavirus restrictions. We're not doing enough flouting here. <laughs> I forgot to bring in my flout. we got to get our <laughs> flouting game on. Erica Fajardo Sumba, 35, the owner of uh, uh, Las Con, uh, La, Costi, La Costanita Bar and Restaurant. You think I'd know how to pronounce it? You that? would think. I've actually With been the there. With a Dominican wife, you would think. I've actually been there. Arrested Friday on a warrant stemming from a June 30 licensed business inspection. So it, what, when was the announcement made? Mayor Mark made that frustrated announcement that we're, we're cracking down on, on restrictions. I think he makes think it every day. No, but I think Friday was the one right. where it went national, where yeah. he's like, enough already, you know, trying to help you people. And then it was just days later that the arrest came. The arrest came after an inspection following up on arrests made over the summer 
for violation of Governor Ned the Head Lamont's executive order detailing restrictions on outdoor dining, blah, 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 blah. So apparently the place was, uh, they were flouting left and right. They've been flouting. But then they took their flouting game pro, right. and Mayor Mark had the police go down mm -hmm. there, found more violations, and then <laughs> you're out. I just don't know what to say anymore about this. I, you know, I'm not going to... I used to preach, you know, wear the mask, wear the damn mask, blah, 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 So blah, blah. I preach. But I, but I, that's yeah. not anymore. It's like everybody knows what to do. They just choose whatever. I mean, you know, this is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness by making other people sick. Yeah. I, I used to die. Oh. You know what I love is uh, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, so bad at being the mayor of New York City. Right, right. Tuesday morning, he was among many New Yorkers who had to wait several hours to cast a ballot at an early voting site. The mayor was there, like they said, like three hours in line. Good. They have to do that stuff to appear like they're regular people. He could definitely right. make a phone call and say, I don't have time in my day. Yeah. I don't have time to deal with people. i got to go in and vote and get out. But he has to pretend to be a regular person and yeah. stand in line for three hours. Yeah. But, but <laughs> they said at first... You know, like the first hour, he was like, you know, that's what you got to do. That's how they all talk. Does he talk like that? By the second hour, he's like, well, that's a little frustrating. By the third hour, he's like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous. You sound like a mom over there. I, I know, but it's like, yeah, it sounds like a you problem. Sure. It sounds like you're waiting in line for three hours because you don't know how to organize your city. It is a given problem. Yes. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then one more thing before we let this go about voting, all right? Uh-huh. Don't chastise me because I voted... Uh, by mail, all right? I'm not going to chastise you by, you want to stand in line for two or three hours, that's fine. Maybe you won't have to. I mean, there's a possibility if you go early enough, you won't have to stand in line to vote. Who is chastising? I mean, every place you read, I mean, people are complaining about other people doing this, doing that. You know, first of all, I went through the regular channels, got my ballot, came from the town clerk in New Fairfield, and then when I got my ballot and I, and I marked it, made sure I did it correctly, I went down to the town clerk's office, Right outside, there's one of those big boxes, official boxes. You put your ballot in there. It sits there 24-7, and you can't get into it unless you, like, put a stick of dynamite in the side. Well, people don't trust the government. What do well, you expect? you know, it, 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 I, those I, are the somebody tiny want, little slot up Somebody on top. wanted to get into it. I can't it, even get my little finger in there. All right, well, you need to calm down a little bit. You're What's telling me to calm down? Well, you're just not calm. What's exciting? So don't yell at me and tell me that I'm an idiot because I voted by mail. You're not an idiot. You, you did what you thought was responsible. I, when we talked about Election Day, we had some ideas as to how we were going to handle it on the show. I'm still going to go out live, but the original idea I was going to dress in a stupid costume and cause a scene. I don't think I'm going to need to cause a scene. You think I'm, there's going to be scenes already caused? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go down right. with the phone and okay. do the show remotely All right. from the line. See how long it takes me to vote. See what I observe. So a man on the street type of thing. Man on the street, yeah. baby. We're going to have all sorts of technical problems that morning. I'm oh, sure. certain of it, but we'll get some good radio out of it. Probably there's going to be no cell service. Today. I'll vote, <laughs> and there's all going to be chaos going on. I'm looking forward to that. And I forgot that recently I changed, I think I changed my political affiliation just to F with them. Yeah, but the thing is... I like to keep them on their toes. You don't need to vote your political affiliation. I, and I don't know. Which Except is why, the primaries, which is why I said, "What does it matter? You know what? I'm going to change it just right. to mess with everybody." Okay. So look at that. All look right. at me, mess. You're a mess maker. I'm flouting. <laughs> Six thirty-two rain in the forecast today, but we'll see sunny skies this afternoon, up to fifty-seven. All right, all right, all right. We're flouting everybody. We're flouting. We got Operation Tubs going on. That's flouting right there. No, that's a flautist. Oh, okay. Flouting is like just completely ignoring. <clears throat> Why can't we just to say the rules, the a restrictions? Word that everybody knows, as opposed to flouting. Flouting's fun. Flouting's good. You know, you gotta diddle that flute. Two different things. Though. Can you lower the commercials? I no, almost swore there. I'm not going to. No, you. You gonna? Oh, right. what? Or, 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 what, or what? Do you want to know the answer to gonna, or what? Are you going to fight me? Do you want to? Do you want me to fight you? No. Yeah. All right. So then. You know I'm not a fighter. All right. I don't want to fight either. So quit talking shit. You, you quit talking shit. You quit talking shit. Hey, Mike Snyder, what's up, hey, man? Mike. It is flannel season. Rich, Frank, Michael. 
I gotta get under flannel. Antonio, Timothy. You know who doesn't like flannel? Who? Big pun. Joey Etch back in there. What? Well, the, the big guy, the big okay, boss. Uh, Cuban pimp. You know what? I, 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 I could understand that. Well, his style is. It's not flannel. It's not flannel. Right. But uh, I love flannel. You know? I haven't done flannel in a while. I need to get in on this game. I'm a New Englander. Yeah? You know? A New Angler? New Englander. Can't you just say New Englander? You know, who's on the radio. I always feel like I'm in a television show when I have a beard and I'm wearing a flannel and I'm on the radio. Because you see that. You know who wears flannel? Movies and stuff and TV shows the that aren't that good. The millennium. I was wearing it before it was trendy. Oh, I see. That's why you're going to wear it then. That's why I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it because it's in my closet. Okay. And I have That's about 16 idea. shirts, 10 gotta, of which are I-95 t-shirts. I'm going to the zone right now and I got to order some flannels. I bought the... I bought this at Savers for four ninety nine. What? what do you mean enter the character C below? And it smells like a campfire because I wore it over the weekend. Guess what? Yeah. By a fire. <clears throat> Ethan, you're probably a bleeder, says Lama. What Duck, does that mean? He's talking about the fights. Duck I Dynasty. Like, what about Duck Dynasty, Denise? I liked that show at the beginning, and then they became the center of, like, uh... You know, like a political firestorm that I can't recall what yeah, was said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it so much better when I can't remember what the problem was. I've just entered characters. I've already entered characters. Why do I have to do it twice? Why do you have to shop while you're at work? Huh? Because I need to get it on the flannel game. Yeah, here we go with the flannel game. Savers is good, Lama. So, yeah, I go to... I tell Erica, I can't find my flannel. I have like six, seven of them. Why did you go to Erica? She said they're... They're in the seasonal bin in the attic. I said, well, I'm not going in the attic. The ladder's damn near broken. If I put my weight on the stair, I'm going to snap the thing. I need a new flannel. So I'll go to Savers. And she goes, no, you're not going to Savers because you're going to spend $50 on microfiber shirts that somebody already wore because I like those shirts. Shirts like, uh, <laughs> I do this. Like if somebody was in a softball tournament or something. Yes. I buy those shirts. Yeah. The microfiber shirts. Because right. nobody has it. What, 12 guys in the world have it? And they all either threw them away or dropped them off at Savers. So this is the kind of shirt that they'll sell. You know, they, they'll make a recreation of it at Abercrombie and Finch. <laughs> I know how to really say it. And, and they'll, they'll sell it for $45. And it all, all it'll say is like, you know, I don't know, Avery Sports. And then somebody spends $50 on a microfiber shirt for a made-up, you know, athletic organization. Yeah. Whereas I go to Savers, you see, and for $2, I get a microfiber softball tournament t-shirt that okay. I didn't play in. See, now I can see why Erica doesn't send you anywhere. Well, she do said, anything. don't go to Savers because you're going to do that. She thought I was going to buy the flannel and then 16 softball shirts. I just bought the flannel. Would you? If she didn't say that, I would have done that. But I was like, pfft. I acted like I didn't have that in mind. I was like, pfft. Tss. What are you talking about? You, you knew she was right. Pfft. You didn't have to do any of that. Pfft. And then I found a bunch of those softball shirts that I wanted. But I didn't buy her. And it was packed. But then where do they get off? There is a couple items that are like... Like, I, I think I would buy this. It was $24. I'm like, come on, Sabres, get, get your act together. I could buy it new for $44. Please type. Let's numbers. keep everything 10 and under, you know? Let's not get crazy. You understand? No. We're going to go on here in 30 seconds. We're going to go on here in 30 seconds. Everybody stay awesome. calm. I don't know what Harbor Freight is. I've heard of it. Does Abercrombie still exist? I don't know. Who knows? Nobody knows anymore. All right. Um, so we're going on here. What's next? Miss Headlines round one. We're going to talk dating in the coronavirus era. We're we'll talking about be pissing on people also. I-95, home of rock and roll. Ethan and Lou here at 638. Miss Headlines coming up momentarily. Yeah, we're going to talk about dating in... Uh, during the coronavirus, we're going to talk about pissing on other humans and a uh, rare full moon coming our way. All right, cool.
638. Looking for uh, rain this morning, sunny this afternoon, up to 57. Here's Kelly with the, the traffic update. Trying to think, we have so much going on this week. When is that woman coming on? Woman. When is that woman coming on that wrote the book? The author is good to suck at something. Next week. We've been scheduling this for weeks. The buildup's killing me. She better be good. Hubble Assist doesn't have uh, the shit together. It's good to suck at booking interviews. <laughs> <laughs> No dating talk. Here it comes, though. Whether you like it or not, we are going to talk dating. Some interesting terms have cropped up in our new reality. Oh, I got a question for you guys. I was thinking about this this morning. The CDC already sent out $200 million to different states to start preparation for storage capabilities for a potential vaccine. Now, 200 million, I don't know how much they've gotten done with that. That's not enough to equip. Because apparently none of the states are equipped to refrigerate a potential vaccine. So the CDC sent some money to different states. So they had all these, you know, muckety mucks, part of our Bringing It Back Word series, talking about how, uh, trust me, the vaccine is going to be good. Once we announce it and we go, we're going. Well, we're going to have it by the end of next week. <laughs> And they say, we're Mark not going to say, we're not going to encourage you to get it unless it's safe. Do you know how hard they're going to push to get people to take this thing? And do you know how resistant I'm going to be to take it? Don't take it. I don't care. I'm going to take it eventually, but I'm going to watch to see if people like Here you go. grow a mushroom on top of their head or something. How's my sports? Thank you, Jay. 640 Lou has sports. The Dodgers are World Series champions for the first time in 32 years. Mookie Betts went two for four with a home run. They beat the Rays three to one in game six of the fall classic in Arlington. Steve Cohen is expected to be approved as the new owner of the Mets this week. Multiple reports say Major League Baseball owners will vote virtually on the sale of the club on Friday. And after two years, Des Bryant back in the NFL, sort of. The Ravens have signed the former Cowboys star to their practice squad. And uh, finally, ESPN's College Game Day show will broadcast November 14th from Augusta, Georgia during the third round of the Masters. That's not, that's atypical, number one. College Game Day is awesome. Even if you don't like college football. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. That's absolutely not true. <laughs> if you love college football and you're not getting up early in the morning to watch college, college Game Day, I can't help you. That's one of the best sports pregame road shows in America. I don't want to. No, you, you know what, you you called yourself a sports fan yesterday, and I wish I had something heavy that I could throw at you. Really? You, you, you're so far You're going to determine now the criteria for being a sports fan. Is that what you're going to do? Well, I don't have to do determine... Do you like hockey? You going to watch hockey? I don't have to determine are criteria you watch hockey? to know no, that you are not hockey. one. I'm not going to watch you're hockey. You're not going to watch hockey, okay. Well, then you're not a sports fan. Oh, is that right? You are so far from being a sports fan that I don't have to determine criteria. How long is this going to go on? I think I'm done. Can we wrap? Sure. Cool. Weather from I-95. Rain this morning. Partly sunny this afternoon. Who are they coming rain. to your city? Rain tomorrow, 50 degrees. Now you're just trying to annoy me, are you? Just trying. You wouldn't know what that is and if your Friday, life depended on it. You couldn't find that answer. <laughs> Friday, more rain, 45 degrees. It's currently 51. This is my elbow itching. So... All right. So my question for Could you. Could I get uh, what, uh, uh, just to miss headlines? Sure. Round one? Yep. Over there. So, you. the vaccine. So let's just say, for argument's sake, the end of next week they say it's done. We want you all, it's going to be available at your local vaccination station on Monday. I like that. Right? Vaccination station. Thank you, buddy. On Monday, and we are, we really want you to go get it. It's best for public safety. And you know how we've heard our leadership talk about safety, regulations, restrictions, right. etc. Right. They're very pushy about it, which I don't have a problem with because people don't listen to the simplest of things. No. However, when they make this announcement about the vaccine and they get all pushy in the face, right. I'm going to be pissed. So my question for you is, are you going to get it right away? I could have asked you that question 15 times already. 
like 10 minutes ago. I thought you did. It's such a simple question, and yet I just kept saying things. Right. You know, because it's like every sci-fi movie nightmare scenario come to life. Mm -hmm. Having the government strongly encourage you to be vaccinated with an unproven juice that they inject into you. And then six months later, <clears throat> we're birthing aliens. So now, yeah, you, you actually had me there <laughs> until we're birthing aliens. And now, I've stopped listening. And now, stop listening to you. Are you cool with that? Now, you're bordering on the ridiculous. <laughs> Is that what you want for America? Actually, why, why not? I'm just saying. Why not? Shit could get ugly real quick. And I'm not going to squoze an alien out of my orifice, you know? That's good to know. If you want to wait in line six hours to have the government inject juice in your neck so that you could squoze an alien out of your holes, that's up to you. Are you guys psyched about squoozing aliens out of your holes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I am of the belief that, that <laughs> that's how it'll sound. Just shrieks of alien terror across the nation. I'm of the belief that you're certifiably <laughs> insane. <laughs> and I'll be out in the street with my nunchucks trying to figure out how to not hit myself in the head and defend <laughs> my family. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Ah! Oh, I do. I am ready in here. Should you birth an alien out of your ass, I'll come flying in with a samurai sword, you see. That's great. Oh! Ah! <laughs> something so wrong with you. I'm just telling you, there's a lot, a lot of things to worry about. All right. And you're not considering all the many factors. Factors that include the potential of birthing aliens. Okay. Lama wants me to stop. Thank you, Lama. Gail says she got the flu shot already, but she's going to wait a little bit on the vaccine. Well, no, no one's going to get the, any normal human. Well, I shouldn't say normal. Any everyday human is not going to get the vaccine right away. It's going to be a while because it's going to start with the healthcare professionals. They're going to get it first. Yeah, but I'm trying the to... The emergency people are going to get it. I'm trying to figure Senior out... Senior citizens like myself are then going to get it. Right. But that's not what I'm talking about. From the time it gets to you, it's going to be three, four, five months. But that's not what I mean. Okay. I'm talking about when it does get to me. Yeah. When it's readily available to me. All right. And they're like, come on, what are you people waiting for? Go get it. Okay. It's, it's, it's part of public health and... In the best interest of the country, why aren't you going to get it? I'm going to resist them, too. Well, see, I forgot that you're a rebel. It's not rebellion. No, it's, it is. It's not. It's just I They don't... say you should do it, and just for reasons that sometimes I don't understand, you're not going to. You're too trusting. It's worked for me in the past. All right. I'm just saying. All right. Now I have to decide. There you are. With a bad case of COVID, because you didn't take the vaccine, now what are you going to do? <clears throat> I'm going to hunker down, eat some chicken soup, there you go. and I'll see you in three weeks. That should do. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, now it's readily available to me, right? All the healthcare professionals have got it, the elderly, everybody that's supposed to get it out front has gotten it. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, what are you doing, guy like Lou? Why haven't you gotten the vaccine yet? And they're running PSAs every five seconds. Now I have to decide how much of a laggard marketing term I'm going to be. Because what is the safe thing to see p potential side effects, right? Is it six months? You know, because some of these medical stuff, they give people something and it doesn't rear its ugly head for years. Huh? Well, they just wait years. It's food for thought. Okay. You know, meditate on it, pray on it, eat, pray, and then love. Sounds like a good day. Have a big breakfast. How about a big lunch? You know, settle your mind with some prayer. Okay. And then just give it to somebody. Okay. Big day. Big day out. 
All right, how far are we from... And I got a whole half hour's worth of material here I've recorded for my new stand-up special. <laughs> so where... What's, what's it called? <laughs> it's called Eat, Pray, Love. Okay. <laughs> okay let me, let me, let's recap as to what's coming up here. Well, how long? Uh, in about two, two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Yes, and I can't play another song, so don't ask me. Don't get nervous. I'll trade the mask for the possibility of birthing an alien. Lama makes a point. It's an interesting one. Right. I like it, because they're going to say, if you didn't get your vaccine, you got to continue to wear the mask. But I bet you they're going to encourage continuing to wear the mask, right? Even after you've had the vaccine. Sure. They're going to say it's a brave new world that we live in. Please wear a mask anyway. Wear a mask, smell your own breath till, till you die. Until you're dead from it. From your own breath. And we're not talking about that. We're not talking about the health risks of smelling your own breath after three cups of coffee. I gotta go into the stop and shop to get a loaf of bread. You know? And I gotta smell the Colombian roasters that I drank all morning. Or what you could do. I gotta start bringing my toothbrush to And work. This, this makes way too much sense would be to get um, a couple of boxes of surgical masks ones that you dispose of and which are more capable of holding in those uh, COVID juices. You could do that, but that would be too easy. I'm out there branding. I got the I-95 mask. I yeah. got to let, let them know. Right. You know? Sure. You didn't hear a word I just said. Yeah, you get the surgical masks that are more capable of blah, 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 wear the mask. Right. And, and then you don't have to worry about them, your, And you don't have to worry. Breath. You throw the mask away, you put on another one. Mm. Well, don't you just know. Okay, here we go. It all. One minute. All you right. Ready? Yes. How long now? 53 seconds. Why are my headphones on with 53 oh, yeah. seconds? It might as well be a week. Paid. Ethan Dick brought back a nice word in our... Uh, Word series this morning. Oodles. You guys remember Oodles? That was fun. You need to know that tomorrow is your first chance to win an Amazon Fire Stick. We're going we're to uh, actually talk about that real quick before we get to traffic. Just by knowing the word of the day. So you've got to follow us on Instagram. It's two really simple things. I already heard somebody complaining about it yesterday. You have to have the i95 Rock app. Get it. It's free. Google Play or the App Store. And then you got to follow us on Instagram at i95 Rock. Tomorrow morning, you're going to go get the word of the day from the Instagram account. You're going to memorize it. I'm sure that's going to be difficult. And then you're going to type it into the app chat on the app. And then you're in the running for a free You Amazon are checking price. out the Humble Rock and Roll i95 and i95 Rock. Hey. Listen and then do as we say. Don't over explain. It's not that hard. I'm not over explaining it. I already did. You, to our Facebook account? I caught myself over explaining it. Oh. Well, we're giving away stuff again. And tomorrow's one of those days. We do, do it every Thursday. Tell them what it is. Uh, an Amazon Fire Stick. Yes. Which is pretty cool. It makes your dumb TV into a smart TV. you got to do two things. you got to have the i95 Rock app, which you can download for free at Google Play or the App Store. And you got to follow us on Instagram, at i95 Rock. Right. Thursday mornings only. We do it every day, but it's Thursday that you can participate in this. I, uh, Ethan and I give out a word of the day in our story on Instagram. So tomorrow you're going to take that word. From Instagram. Yeah. Try and memorize it for four seconds. Can you pull that off? <laughs> and then go into the app right. and type that word into the app chat. And then that puts you in the running for the Amazon And Fire. you'll see the chat, little chat thing right on uh, the app. And people who find that too difficult will not have a free Fire Stick. Right. I think it's up to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So in preparation for tomorrow, you might want to follow us on Instagram, at i95rock, and get the... Uh, the, uh, the app if you don't have it already. Okay, cool. Good thing you didn't over explain that. I certainly did. Here's your, <laughs> here's your I-95 right now traffic update. <coughs> Get some mansplain in there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Steer season. What? Deer There's season, bear huh? season there, Cal. What's what a deer strike? Animal traffic? What is a deer strike? 
is that they've had us, they've had it with us hitting them with our Sonatas, so they come out of the woods <laughs> with Uzis and start attacking. Got a deer strike on Federal Road. They're busting shots left and right. All right, Miss Headlines is brought to you by New Age Collision Center, General Motors certified collision repair facility where service and quality still exist. From a small fender bender to big collision repairs, these are the guys to get the job done. Located in Brookfield, 203 546 7614. Modern dating has so many ridiculous nuances that it requires its own vocabulary. I mean, uh, there was a time, actually, when none of us had heard of ghosting or catfishing or swiping. Now the pandemic has led to a whole new list of terms to describe unique dating situations. Here's some of the best ones. Okay. COVID-worthy. Yeah, right? Is he or she COVID-worthy? That's self-explanatory. It is. And you'd have to weigh that. Uh, if I was single, I'd... Still, I'd just be out there spreading COVID, receiving COVID, spreading, receiving, I receiving, spreading. I got you. Uh, sexually distancing. Sure. I think that's pretty self-explanatory yeah. as well. Uh, virtual date. That sounds like a blast. That sounds awful. Because it has all the worst parts of a date mm -hmm. and none of the good ones. Correct. <laughs> and then you, you, who doesn't have their mic on? Who's yeah. muted? Whose dog is yapping in the background? Mm -hmm. Always a good time. Yeah. These are... Uh, Unique dating situations with the COVID. Quarantine and chill. Same as Netflix and chill? Correct. Yes. But, so what do you, you diddle it? Well. You know, virtual diddleage. Right. Cool. Right. And then uh, antibody boy and antibody girl. What's that? It's a person who brags about having antibodies on a dating app, hoping it will lead to more matches and what? more diddling. Get out of here. I'm not going to get out of here. I mean, b dating was bad prior to this. Well, Can you imagine well, yeah. being out here in these streets right now? No. Sounds awful. No, not at all. Sounds really awful. Yes. <laughs> Police. You work up the courage to go see him, and you walk in one of those giant suits. <sighs> Police are identifying a man who allegedly peed on his fellow airline passenger. Sure. Winston-Salem Journal reports that Daniel Chalmers was arrested after allegedly urinating on Alicia Beverly earlier this month. I remember this. That's right. Flight attendant said uh, Chalmers, who's a pastor, said he, uh, he thought he was going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Once arrested, Chalmers denied doing it and said it was uh, out of his character. Have you been accused of urinating on a passenger on a flight? I'm not going to believe this. Called the law firm of Wisdom, Jism, and Brown. But never. Huh? Okay. What? No. <laughs> Look at you. Never. Then don't call my law firm. How about you? No. Okay. No, I just get people out of trouble for that. I'm asking for it. I'm like, Judge, come on. All he did was, you know, you got to go. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, really. He's just a crackhead. <laughs> Makes sense. Halloween may seem extra spooky this year thanks to a full moon. It'll, it'll be visible. Oh, that's all I need. What's that from? Caddyshack. It'll be visible in every time zone on Saturday, something that hasn't happened since 1944. <sighs> We don't need, listen, as much as I love a beautiful full moon, sure, sure. a beautiful full moon yeah. on Halloween, right. on Friday, sure. in the middle of COVID, we don't need this. Why don't we need it? People do act weird during, prior to, during, and just after a full moon. You've I never know. noticed that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really believe strongly in that. I can see my own behavior alter, go from bad to worse, mm -hmm. you see. Under the foam, I'm like. Ah, ah, I've been doing that for the last. Ah, oh, no, this is different from the alien. This is my wolf man. Oh. Can I finish the story? Yeah, I'm howling. The next one won't happen until 2039. I'm talking about this full moon we're talking about for a Halloween evening. It's oh. also known as a blue moon, even though the color won't change. Scientists use the term to describe the second full moon of the month. We're in deep s. The police blotter is going to be filled. With urination, you know, COVID juices. You talk to my wife about this, about the full moon. She knows the moon. But she used to work in psychiatry when she got out of nursing school. Seven years she worked. And she said when there was a full moon, there were problems. <laughs> I don't think anybody was pretending they were a pterodactyl, but... 
Probably. But she believes in them. Oh, yeah. And she sa she's saying from her time in the field... Yes. ...that she's seen direct results from... Correct. I love it. Yeah. I love it. We might have to get her on the show on Friday to say... Tell everybody, like, the top injuries that they came in mm -hmm. to the hospital with. And those are the things that you most want to avoid, you know? Sure. Deciding all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you want to fry a turkey a month before <laughs> Thanksgiving. Because the moon told you to. How do we get to frying a turkey? I don't know, but Friday night I'm going to be shirtless in my front lawn going... <laughs> That's a wrap on Miss Headlines. That's a new noise that I added to my array. That's unfortunate. Part of our bringing it back noise series. That's unfortunate. All right. I think I've done enough for you people today. Oh, God, yes.